she's almost four. I've had her since she was four months. Um, I've only kind of found you in the last year or so, so all the trick training and everything that we've done um, has all been positive reinforcement and stuff like that. So she doesn't do stick training or anything like that. Okay, she's but never done the target training. She's never done target training. Okay. Um, she's free flighted. Um, so she comes to work with me. She's we live on a boat, so she has. Oh, wow. I, I, I essentially live in the Avery. She has <laughs> free reign in the boat, free reign at work. Um, haven't flown her outside, so there's not really that kind of support network up, so up north. So fully flighted, not pre-flighted. Yeah, fully flighted. Okay. So yeah. So um, I have lost her outside four times, and oh, wow. each time has been quicker and quicker for her to come. So the last time she flew, I, I didn't replace the door fast enough when I was getting off the boat, and she flew straight past me and went, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, and landed in the mangroves. And I just sat there for five minutes with my cup of coffee, shaking my um, sunflower seeds, and she flew down to me. So we'd always done, and the time before that, she was up in a gum tree, but because I've been teaching her ups and downs and all that kind of stuff, she actually ended up flying Good. down to me. So that was wow. super, super, super cool. So I was And like, all four times were accidental, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. So okay. um, but she's only had her wings once. All the information you have is just amazing but I'm like I don't know where to start yeah. so um, and I'm always in for learning more and all that kind of stuff but um, I guess it's more just finding out where she's at and then kind of where I can go from from here. Um, I, I do have an issue with her um, biting not me because I can read her body language but when she goes to people she'll just or you know she's you, you uh, anybody I give her to so my mom or any caretaker or anything they're all afraid that she's going to bite them just purely because she's completely unpredictable and all yeah. Um, <laughs> unpredictable per se like I can tell when she's stroppy or anything like that but if I leave her with anybody mm -hmm. um I'm, I'm really worried about that and they're obviously really worried about that as well so so okay. maybe focus on socialization today and like yeah yeah so um i've made sure that so she's harness trained i've made sure since the get-go so her first trip out in the harness was to a marketplace so lots of noise she doesn't freak out easy she doesn't um take off when there's cool. loud bangs or anything like that she's really cruisy like loves being in the boat loves the car will talk incessantly the time she's in the car yeah, yeah she sounds really desensitized and yeah yeah so peas and corn and um zucchini and broccoli and and all that kind of stuff and then the that's all the soaked seed on top and stuff like that so it's um yay a good cool. diet yeah looks good <laughs> i think the only thing that i would maybe do is pull the nuts out and use those more for training i'd like to see what she does i want to okay i want to see how like. you train, how you cue things. Okay. And you direct us where you want us to be or not be. Okay. Um, I want to see how how you control that environment or how much you need to control that environment. Right. I just want to get a feel for what you do and and then we'll we'll go from there. Okay. So you want me to take her out? Yeah. It'll be interesting with all the bird noises what she um You coming? What's going on? Hi. Hi. Stretch. Stretch. And the and, uh, top. Oh, there we go. Good girl. Good girl. So I'm going to just pause it for a sec. Every time that she has ignored a cue of yours, you go in and you pet her. Yeah. So um, one of the things we talk about in the family friendly course is understanding the training quadrant what positive reinforcement negative reinforcement positive punishment negative punishment understanding what those what is actually happening even though your focus is using a positive or plus reinforcement of a treat yeah there's a lot of other things happening that may increase or decrease the likelihood of the behavior you're trying to get yeah so if she likes being pet then you're reinforcing ignoring the cue yeah if she doesn't like being pet then you're punishing her for ignoring the cue yeah so just being aware that you're doing that will hopefully help you move forward. 
Oh, you've got a wave. Right. Shush, pretty wings. Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> she only made it halfway. <laughs> Good girl. She's like, how about this? Batman. <laughs> Good girl. Shush, pretty wings. Shush, shush, pretty wings. Nice. Wave. Oh no. <laughs> Didn't have a good grip that time. No. Okay, I, I'm Wave. seeing enough that I, I think we have to grip. <laughs> Wave! There we go. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. You guys are doing awesome. Uh, a couple just little things to clean up from what I'm seeing initially are that there's you you have a tendency to cue things before she's done eating. Yeah. So yep. what that does is it delays the response it, time. It makes it feel like she's got a slower response time, but she's actually got a pretty quick response time. Just wait till she's done eating. Yeah, yeah. I like to see when people have like a clear line of this is the minimum of the behavior. So anything that or above, I'll reinforce. Mm -hmm. Where I, I caught you reinforce a couple things that were like, well, she kind of did it, so here. Yeah. And so that'll eventually that'll decrease how well she does it. it. Yeah. So set like a if if you want the wave to be here, but the minimum is here. Mm. Don't reinforce for the for, for the light one. Yeah, there's a bug bite. <laughs> You'll get those here. Yeah. So does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. For socialization, uh, socialization training. One of the things that we recommend with everybody is to teach target or touch training. And you were mentioning that, that she doesn't know that yet. No. Okay. Is there a reason you haven't done it? Um. <laughs> Hi, baby. Um, just purely that I didn't know about it until uh, like she'd already been doing all this kind of stuff. So okay. yeah, I, d I didn't know about it. So one of the reasons that we, we really encourage people to target train is it allows a, a random stranger or somebody who you want her to become social with the ability to communicate on her level yep. in a language that they both understand. Right. Right now you guys have a very clear communication but she and I won't have anywhere, we have nothing. Yeah. So by you training her or me training her to touch the end of a stick, now anybody can hold that stick and it tells this bird, when somebody approaches in this manner with that item, right. I know that I'm gonna get something I want, <clears throat> even though I don't know who that person is. Right. And it's, uh, we, we just did this in the last class and our daughter was able to, at the end of a two and a half hour class, she was able to go up with a stick and the bird would go over and target to her. And the bird yeah. had never targeted before. Yeah. So this is helpful for getting birds that are lost in a tree. It's helpful to get them down. It's helpful to get them in and out of a crate if they don't like it. Yep. It's helpful to introduce helpful to introduce them to strangers and and not necessarily make them social with a stranger because you don't necessarily want somebody to come on your boat and steal your bird. Yeah. You don't want her that social, but you do want people who are gonna care for to you could target the bird away from the door so they can open it up, take out something that needs to be removed, close the cage without worrying about being bitten. Okay. Because it gives that person a clear communication with the bird that to this show is this is what I want you to do and here's the promise you'll get a treat. So I think that's where I think that's where we'll start. And then while we wait in between stuff we can kind of go through the steps I would take to get her to do a boomerang. Yeah. That sound good? Okay. No. Cool. You haven't done any clicker stuff before, it looks like? No. Nope. Okay, so she's gonna be like, what is this? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'll explain it to you first, and then I'm going to do my best to stay back, since strangers are a concern for her. I'll stay back and try to yeah. walk you through it. See, I'll have customers come into the office, and, and some, like, it's her space, and she'll just sit on the perch, and others, she'll fly down and be straight up their arm and on their shoulder and on their head and stuff. Like, she just, I don't know if it's a sixth sense or she's like, yeah, I want, I want, want to know this person or I don't want to know that. Like, she just, it's just random, completely random. And some of them will ask, do you have birds or whatever? I don't know okay. what it is. Generally, it's male though, but most of the time, it, most of my customers are male, so. Okay, yeah. well, so then, do you want me to go ahead and train you, her? Yeah. Okay, let me grab some of your treats from you. These are, these are decent size. Will you take it from me? When you're teaching target training, some birds will bite the stick because they're aggressive, 
Some will bite it because they're curious, some will run from it. And so there's a lot of different ways to get the bird to get there. The way I always approach is you want the bird to touch the end of the stick. You don't want them to grab, you don't want them to grab anywhere in the stick. You want them to touch here. That is the specific target. I don't want them to chomp down. So to keep them from chomping, there's a train that's gonna be loud here for a sec. So to keep them from chomping down, I will start by having it just out of their reach as they try to get it, try to get it, try to barely touch it. Right. It's not starting here and they can go anywhere. It's just barely coming into their space. That's for a bird that's curious enough or aggressive to try to touch it. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna see what happens here. So curious. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. So you saw her kind of look at it, wasn't really sure. Yeah, what is that? Let's explore it. Clicking the exact moment she touches it tells her and will tell her that click equals treat. Mm -hmm. And the click marks the exact moment that she did what I want her to do. Right. We're accepting if she bumps it. Yeah, she just bumped into it. She's just listening to all the other birds. Yeah. Like, oh my God. There's a lot happening here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's somewhat, in some ways, it's a challenging environment to train in. Yeah. But also, if they get it in this environment, they'll do great at home. Nice. That didn't yeah, take you, long. You saw her body language change, tell me she's ready to work. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm going to put this, I'm going to try not to flash the treat, and I'm not going to show her the treat right beforehand. And I'm going to see if she does get it, she'll move one or two steps to her right. Let's see. Now I'll try to get her to one or two steps to her left. There we are. more treats from you. Yeah. So we get three or four steps. It's that easy. <laughs> <laughs> the last one took two and a half hours. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, because there's she a just different... picked stuff up so quick. Yeah, you can tell you've done a lot of training. There's also a difference in the approach. She was curious, so she wanted to touch it, and she clearly understands training. The more a bird understands training, the faster they learn. Yeah. So you get her back over here, then I'll have you do it. See ya! See ya! Bye! <laughs> and I'll, I'll click for you for now. Yeah. So keep in mind, what I want you to do is I want you to point straight at her face. And that means if you're, if you're over here, you're pointing towards her face. Yep. You're not like this, because then she can bite any part of it. You're right. gonna point straight at her to try to get her to get the tip. Okay. And I would suggest, based on where she is now, try to get her to move two or three steps to this position. Yep. And I'll click for you. Good job making that adjustment. What's that? It was a good job making that adjustment because she asked her to go really far. Yeah. Like where you left off. Yeah, so here, step back a sec. So we're out of her bubble for just a second. Yep. So, uh, as Jamie was saying, you started too far. She wasn't quite sure. Plus, since we just switched trainers, yes. she was like, what am I doing? <laughs> so this this tells her, hey, we're in training mode. Yep. Let's do this. Just one minor adjustment is it's better to approach to get closer to her to barely touch the end of the stick than it is to give her too much too stick much. to bite and pull back. Right. Because that'll be, comes off like taunting. Okay. So yep. let's let's end with one good repetition here. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and signal her to let's let's do this here. I'm sorry. Let's have her come. If she ends up coming this way, we'll have a demo. Then we'll switch sides. But I'll have you put the stick at this angle on this end and slowly bring it to where she can touch it. Okay. Shake first. Shake. Woo! Got some serious wind. Whoa. That's why the doors open different directions. Yes. 
Can we should go? handle that like a champ. It's getting another gust though. It's the wind, isn't it? Perfect. So in that session there, we yeah. like to try to keep it to two to five minutes. Yep. Since we only have you for a few hours, we're gonna try to extend how long those sessions are today. Mm -hmm. But when you're training at home, just keep it at two to five minutes. Yeah. Or you can cause burnout. And then we'll get everybody else to do a target. Did you give her a treat? Oh, it's too late. <laughs> okay, you were fired from the clicker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was short lived. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How's it work? Well, you get what you click. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh.